Well, it's Asylum of the Birds is a house in Johannesburg owned by a particular man who uh, lets uh, people stay there who can't find any other place to stay, but he also doesn't like to cage his animals, so he allows uh, especially birds and perhaps other animals to stay in the building with the people. There's sort of people live on the fringe. You can f find people like this in any country in the world, you know. People often say, well, where do you find people like this? So I said, well, just go to your own Salvation Army. You, you can pick up people like this. I like outside art because I work with outsider people. Some of them, if you want to call what they do in some of the photographs art, well, then it's outside of art partly, but it's also beyond that because it's a very sophisticated art. I'm, a quite a sophisticated approach towards what I'm doing and so um, that's what makes the pictures interesting in a way because they you know they're outside of art in s some respects but on the other hand they're quite uh, philosophical. Everybody has a fascination with birds I mean it's archetypal they can fly so since the time most people were children they almost wish they were birds it's almost inherent in the human species you know they wish they were birds or they're curious about the way a bird lives the what a bird thinks and what they experience as they fly. Birds in mythology represent purity and in a way they link the heavens to the earth. You try to find things that appeal to me, you know, so you only know when you see it and you can find things that are inherently interesting but it doesn't mean that they have a photographic presence. This happens quite often. I, mean, I can go to a flea market where there are thousands or tens of thousands of objects to look for things that might interest me, and I might not find anything. It's not because I didn't see interesting things, but they just don't have the right texture, the right tonality, whatever it is to fit into a photograph. And so, you know, that, that's always a consideration, formal elements. Just finding something and putting in a picture isn't enough, you know, it has to be contrasted with other elements in the picture. So it's very difficult in my pictures to decipher the meaning of the work because the work is multi-layered and, and many times the opposite and the, it's very visual so it's very difficult for me to just say oh the picture is archetypal and that's why I should take the picture. The picture becomes archetypal once I push the button and then it's processed and then I print it up and then, then I know whether it has those abilities but I think ultimately it's not necessarily the one or two things in the picture that are archetypal. It actually should be the picture itself as archetypal. I always shoot for complexity. I, I, I shoot for complexity, but a very strong formal coherence. So I always say my pictures should be simple in form and complex in meaning. And when I feel the formal elements are coherent, but, and the meaning is deep and multi-layered, then I might be ready to pick up the camera. People say the pictures, I say they're dark and, and I say they're light. And so, you know, I think the two are come together in all sorts of ways. The pictures have a sense of comedy and tragedy. So they're opposite meanings in, in all these photographs, and most of them. Everything you see is my kind, it's me. Nobody can take the same pictures. So if you went in there and tried to take the same pictures, you might have your own comedy. It's just like nobody can paint like Picasso, or nobody can make a sculpture like Michelangelo or, or, you know, so this is the way uh, that I construct the world. And my humor is different than other people's, but I guess ultimately the picture has to convey a, a sense of humor that a lot of people can uh, relate to in one way or another, if it's to somehow or another maintain its presence out there. I've been doing black and white all my life. I'm the last generation of people that grew up in a black and white world, so my pictures in a way are synonymous with black and white. You can't separate the meaning of the work from the fact that they are in black and white. And so that, you know, they're very reduced pictures, the, you know, they're very formalistic, uh, they're very abstract in their own way. Color I've never really been attracted to, it doesn't seem to fit my genre and it doesn't fit my aesthetic sensibility. It's a place in the mind just a place in the mind, that's all it is. It's a place that I found, a physical place, a camera deals with physicality. It's, a camera's not like a painter where you can paint something in your studio and never leave your house. You have to go out there and photograph something, but I think ultimately, you know, ultimately it's what you're seeing there is a 
transformation through my mind. And if anybody else went to the place, they're not going to capture, the, they're not going to create the same reality. So the reality is Roger Bellin's reality. I look at pictures of your father or your dog or your, that's what photography is partly about, is to remind you of the passage of time, is to concretize the passage of time. And a photograph brings that about in some way, it brings a sense of nostalgia, a sense of meaning that you actually existed at some point in time and that's just a blur in the memory. So it's a, it's a concretization of your own life. And whether it's pictures I took in the asylum of the birds or picture of me next to my two young sisters in 1956, it brings about the same sort of memory. It's, the passage of time is very hard, very, very difficult to really come to grips with ultimately. The core is the issue and what, who are you really, you know, and you don't have any answers and you don't have any questions. I think you get to that point. It may be a good point. It may, it may be the right point to be at. After doing this for nearly uh, 50 years, I'm really pleased that I did it. So if that's sort of something behind, it's like a fossil, you know, these things are like fossils of your life. I guess you, all you can learn is that it's quite, uh, that the whole uh, life process, your own life is just, uh, well, it's just full of enigmas.